But yeah, so that, that one is, we see that God is saying that he, I am, right? There by, there by the burning bush. He's saying I am. And that's the whole idea behind this sermon series. The, the sermon series here is that God calls Himself I am. And, and many times I have people come up to me and go, show me where Jesus says that He is God. Well, it's these seven I am statements in John. He says that it's obvious here that this, these are the statements where Jesus is calling himself God. So it's the first one we went through was I am the bread of life. And he's basically saying, hey, stop grumbling for the piece of bread. Stop grumbling for signs. Remember how God gave your, your ancestors bread in the wilderness. He says, I am that same I, I am that same one. Just rest in me. Then he said last week, it was I am the light of the world that when the Israelites are celebrating by coming and living in tents in this eight-day festival in Jerusalem, all lighting lanterns and these huge lights, he says, I am that light that led you through the wilderness. I mean, he's calling himself God and it's making people very upset. Now, the thing that you have to remember to understand this one Actually, before we go into that, and this week we're doing I am the gate. I am the gate. I, or according to ESV, which is our translation we read out of in the Lutheran Church of Missouri Senate, is, it says, I am the door. As you're going to find out, the door, it's fine translation, but it's not the most helpful it's not the most helpful. So as you're, as you're going to see, you guys are going to become great translators of Greek after this. Not really. You're just going to read. Ah, you're going to read this passage. You're going to see door. And you go, ha, ha, that's cute that they thought that's door, right? Like so, and that's fine to do. That's fine to do. So, so uh, we, we have, we have the, the um, I, am, I am the gate. So what do you think of when you think of I am the gate? When I grew up, I kind of thought it was something like this, that I am the door. That it's that when we say that Jesus is the gate or the door to the sheep pen and the sheep need to enter through the proper gate, we need to be good sheep and choose the correct gate, right? Because behind the door number one or something like that is all goodness and mercy, right? And behind door number two is uh, hellfire and damnation, right? Like that's that, that we need to do that and and when I grew up, this is what I understood it, that I needed to be worthy and need to choose the proper gate. It, did you guys all understand that with me? Is that how you kind of understood things? Like, that's how I understood things. And, this, and when I studied this, I saw something else. And it's fascinating. You're, you're ready for this? So the verse is John chapter 10, verse 9. We're going to be in John chapter 9 and John chapter 10 today, okay? So if you want to follow along. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. It seems like it's saying, walk through the gate and have eternal life. And while that's true... It's not what it's saying here. So, last week. For those of you that remember what we talked about last week, what story did we end on? We had the story about Jesus healing a blind man, right? The story about that same story is connected to Jesus being I am the gate. Are you ready for this? This is awesome, all right? At least I think so, uh, but I'm a Bible nerd. So, we had this story about Jesus healing a blind man, and, and Jesus healed him, and what was the big scuttlebutt of the day? They, that, that the Pharisees and the religious leaders of the day, they didn't like that Jesus healed this man, right? And, and, and they were like, how can you be healed? You're a nasty sinner, right? Because like, they believed that if you were blind or, or had some deformity in it, that you had some sin in your life or your parents had sin in their lives and basically didn't deserve healing at all. And so they asked this blind man, it's like, how come you can see now? Were you lying to us the whole time about your blindness? Were you, were you lying to us the whole time? And he said that beautiful, that beautiful statement. Remember that from last week? He said, that, he goes, I don't know. Because they were accusing Jesus of being a sinner for even healing him. He's like, listen, I don't know if this guy's a sinner or not. All I know is that I was blind, but now I see. 
That's a beautiful confession. It's a beautiful confession of faith. It's a beautiful like, like statement there that I was once blind, but now I see. And, and this, inf- what, what do you think I did to the Pharisees and the religious leaders of the day? Were they happy with that confession of his? No, it enraged them even more. They got so angry with it. <coughs> They're like, I don't know who you think you are, blind man. Like, I don't know. I don't care who you is. Like, we know that you are blind, that you're a sinner, and you're terrible. And, and, and he gives them that confession. It infuriates them, and they want to get rid of him. So when we look at chapter 9, verse 34, they replied to him, you are steeped in sin at birth. How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. Interesting. Interesting. So the Pharisees, they're so enraged that a blind man can now see that they're like, how dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. I, I, think, I, I think that points a finger at all of our short tippers sometimes, right? That sometimes someone starts saying something that bothers us and we're just like, get out of my sight, right? Or is that just me? Yeah, just me? Just me? Yeah, that's... That, okay, so it's just, it's just me. I, I'm the only one that ever, ever, ever has thrown someone out of the... You know? Like, he's basically... The blind man is told by the world and the religion of the day that he's not worthy. That he's not a sheep. And he's thrown out of the pen. Listen, it... We were talking about this in Sunday school just a little bit ago. We're, we, how was I putting it in Sunday school? We, we love to find the sinner in the room now. And, and there's a lot of people in our circles today in Christianity that they view it as their job as to like you're in and you're out. There's a, there's a, a, a big famous guy by the name of John Piper, not John Peeper. He's a good LCMS guy. The, uh, but John Piper... And he's famous for, in his Twitter account, going, farewell, name your person who has just offended him and his sensibilities. He goes, farewell. He's famous for kicking people out of the church. And he makes, he makes a big deal out of it. And because, and a lot of people are like, that's right. That person's now dead to us. Right? That's, that's what we do. Getting back to the blind man. Jesus immediately rebukes the Pharisees of the day and He calls them thieves and robbers. He says, you guys are all thieves and robbers. And if you look at verses, uh, chapter 10, verses 1-5, through 5, which we read, He goes through and tells them a, tar- a parable about sheep and how the- He connects the Pharisees to being thieves and robbers. So let's talk about where we are in the story. What is Jesus calling thieves and robbers? The Pharisees and all the religious, the two two righteous people, the people that think too much of their own righteousness, right? And they're kicking out a blind man, saying, we'll have nothing to do with you. That's who he's calling thieves and robbers. Let's read Jesus saying, I am the gate again. From John chapter 10, verse 7. Therefore Jesus said again, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers. Who's he talking about? He's talking about people who kick out others. Right? Or people who are kicking others out of the pen. But but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief, those Pharisees and the religious leaders and those that think too much of themselves, they will come in, let's see, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. What's he saying there? Let me put it this way. What are the sheep doing? They're not doing anything here, are they? They're just, they're just in there. Do you notice how we've made the door about what the sheep are doing? That's not what this is about. This is all about who? This is about the gate. 
and the thieves and the robbers, right? Like this is, this, is, this is about what the gate is and who the gate is and what the gate is doing. And, and to understand this, you have to understand how this worked in our lives. Because when I, again, when I was growing up, this is what I pictured a gate to be or a door, something that's flimsy on hinges and you go, you go through it to get, get into a pen or something like that, right? You go, you go, you go in and you, and you get into get into a backyard or get into a house or, you know, something like that, that that was it. And, you know, that was my idea of, it, of, of a gate. But in Jesus' day, that's not what a gate is. In Jesus' day, it was common for the shepherd to put his sheep in a pen that was all made of all stone and there were probably thorns and stuff like that on top of it, kind of like razor wire, Right? Thorns and stuff on top of it. And a small opening looks something like this. All right? And there was a small opening on it. And the shepherd would be the one who would basically be the gate. That he would sleep in the opening basically to ensure that no thieves, robbers, coyotes, or other things in the world would attack the sheep. The sheep are under the gate's care. Here's the key point for today. The gate is a person. It's not some inanimate door that you choose. The gate is a person. The gate is a person who kept the sheep safely in the flock. That is the role of the gate. And Jesus says, I am the gate. There's nothing about cheap sheep the sheep choosing the gate to enter. That's what's interesting about God's people being referred to as sheep. We'll talk about this more next week. But have you ever had any interactions with sheep? Sheep are dumb. And they're, yeah, they smell. Like they're... Oh man, I haven't even... We're doing good... I am the good shepherd next week, so I'm not going to destroy all my good sheep jokes over there. My, my, my neighbors next door to me growing up had sheep. And we always were having to interact with those sheep. I hate sheep. <laughs> All right? I, 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 I really, really don't like sheep, right? Like that's, there, there's, but there's nothing about what the sheep are doing here, but rather Jesus is the one who brings you into the kingdom through you, and he keeps you in the kingdom safe from all the thieves and the robbers. And who are the thieves and robbers? Those are the ones, those are the Pharisees, the religious leaders, the overly righteous of the day, the ones that would want to convince you that because you're not acting right, you are out. And he is saying, no, I am the gate. I am the gate. The gate is a person. You know, I always thought of that that cheap, flimsy thing, but the gate, I always thought that of that as the gate, and I had to walk through that. The gate is actually protection for the sheep. The gate is not something that the sheep choose to go through for salvation. Jesus is the gate that keeps the robbers and all the bad things from taking the sheep. The gate is a person. Yeah, I, I think the best analog to this is sometimes we, there's like, it's like a cultural joke that we have in this family, uh, in this family, in, the, in this country, that, that when like a family has a teenage daughter and that daughter begins to date, and what's the joke? The date comes over to get the daughter, right? What's the dad doing? Cleaning the gun, right? <laughs> like that, that's like that. That's the, that's the cultural joke, right? We all have that joke and we all laugh at it. But what's the father being in that? He's being the gate, isn't he? He's being the gate. Because why? Because he loves his daughter. And that daughter is his. And not like in a patriarchal sense, right? That daughter is his. And if that boy disrespects her, tells her she's worthless, tries to steal her away, or anything like that, he's going to have to go through that dad, Right? We have the same cultural analog. And it's, and it's the dad cleaning the gun coming to pick up the daughter, right? Even though we probably don't do that, but it's there. It's there. I don't know, maybe some of you did that. I know some of you. 
The Middle Ages is the same thing. You, know, like you think of that huge castle in the, in, the, in the Middle Age with the big walls and the moat around it. Why were those big walls there? It's because when some warring other tribe or something like that would come up, everyone would flood in through the gate. Why? For protection. For protection, right? Like it's kind of that same idea. That's the whole reason why the walls are there. And Jesus is the gate. Remember, he's talking to the Pharisees here, the thieves and robbers who just told a blind man that he's of no value and they threw him out. That's who he's talking to here. They kicked him out. They told him he was worthless and they literally kicked him out of the family of God, out of salvation, out of safety, and out of the sheep pen. That is what they did to him. But Jesus is the gate and he gives life and salvation to the blind man and protects him from all of those that would tell them that he is of no value. So listen to me here. Listen to me. Jesus is the gate. Jesus is the gate. Some of you need to hear two messages today. You are not the gate. <laughs> that's, the, that's, the number one, that's the number one message. You are not the gate. But the other message I think is the more important one here. When the world is telling you that you're worthless, when someone in the church, some leader says something foolish and kicks you out of the church, when someone says that you are not part of the kingdom of God for acting in some way, when you are told that your life is surrounded by too much sin, that there is simply no hope for you, when you can't seem to measure up to all the other imperfect Christians out there, when you are maligned, mistreated, kicked out, when you want to hear, I want you to hear these words. They are not the gate. They are not the gate. Jesus is the gate. He is the gate. And He has brought you into His pastures and He will do everything in His power to make sure that you are safe, that you are kept in care, even if He has to die, even if He has to rise, all to be your good gate. And He has come to give you life 